Today we're going to be talking about the trace determinant plane. Now, so far we've seen that when you're dealing with the system of linear equations of two variables with constant coefficients, that the behavior of the system is determined by the eigenvalues. And in particular, we get different behavior if the eigenvalues are real versus if the eigenvalues are complex. If the eigenvalues are real, then we have three general situations, the saddle, sink, and source. Uh, if the first eigenvalue is negative and the second one is positive, then the picture we get in the phase plane looks something like this. The first eigenvalue along solutions that start on this line will move towards the origin. Solutions start on the line for the second eigenvalue will move away from the origin and then other solutions will be an interpolation between those two behaviors, right? And this is called a saddle. Another possibility is for both eigenvalues to be negative. So lambda 1 smaller than lambda 2, both smaller than 0. This is called a sink. And the picture here is solutions that start on the line for lambda 1 go towards the origin. Solutions that start on the line for lambda 2 go directly towards the origin along that line. And other solutions get pulled in. No matter where they start, they move towards the origin. And the third possibility is when both eigenvalues are positive. This is called a source. And the picture in the face portrait for this is we have both solutions. If we start on either of the eigenvalue lines, we, we, uh, the, or the eigenvectors, we move directly along that line towards infinity. Otherwise, we're an interpolation between those two possibilities. So that's what happens if our eigenvalues are real. If they're complex, let's call them alpha plus I beta, so alpha is the real part and beta is the complex part. Um, if alpha is negative, then this behavior in the phase plane, will we will get a spiraling towards the origin over time. And this is called a spiral sink. If alpha is positive, the face portraits will look similar, except the direction is outward. We move outward over time. This is a spiral source. And if alpha is actually zero, we only have a purely imaginary eigenvalue, then these ones don't go towards the origin or towards infinity over time. They're periodic. And in the face, plane, they move around periodically in little loops. Uh, sometimes this is called a center. Okay, So those are the possibilities. We, we haven't talked about what happens when one of the eigenvalues is zero or there's only one eigenvalue. We dealt with that before. This is just a, a broader picture of what's going on here. Um, but when you start with the matrix A, B, C, D, Let's erase all of this, right, and start with a matrix A. Let's just call this matrix, will be completely general. The first cat coordinate is A, the second coordinate B, the first coordinate in the second row is C, and the second coordinate in the second row is D. Looking at that matrix A, B, C, D, it's hard to tell which of the scenarios that we just erased this matrix falls under. Okay. The problem is this is a four-dimensional object. There's four degrees of freedom, and it's very hard for us to just look at that matrix and figure out what's going on. Okay. Now, what determines the eigenvalues? We know that what determines the eigenvalues is the zeros of the determinant 
minus lambda times the identity matrix, right? We know that. That's how we found the eigenvalues. So this is equal to, as we've seen before, a minus lambda times d minus lambda uh, plus, or rather, minus bc. Now, if we work with this for a while and change it around, we will get lambda squared minus the quantity a plus d times lambda plus the quantity ad minus bc. And this is what's called the characteristic polynomial for the matrix. And this polynomial determines what the eigenvalues are. And in particular, we see that what matters is not the individual values of A, B, C, and D, but the sum of A and D and A, D minus B, C. Those values are what's going to determine what the eigenvalues are. So let's call A plus D by a new name T, and let's call AD minus BC by a new name D. This T stands for trace, and D stands for determinant. And if we rewrite this characteristic polynomial now as lambda squared minus T, lambda plus d. Now we see this characteristic polynomial only depends on what's called the trace, which is the sum of the diagonal terms a and d, and the determinant, which is a d minus b c. That will completely determine the eigenvalues. Only t and d are necessary. In particular, when we were to write what the eigenvalues are, right, the eigenvalues are going to be, due to the quadratic formula, t plus or minus the square root of t squared minus 4d divided by 2. So those are going to be what the eigenvalues are. And remember, the eigenvalues are going to be real if this thing in here is positive, and they'll have imaginary components if that thing in there is negative. So what's actually important is we need to look at what happens when t squared minus 4d is either positive or negative, right? That's what determines. If t squared minus 4d is positive, then we have real eigenvalues. If t squared minus 4d is negative, then we have complex eigenvalues, right? What really matters is this t squared minus 4d. And in particular, we want to look at when it switches from positive to negative. And it's this t squared minus 4d switches from positive to negative on the line d equals, or the parabola rather, d equals 1 quarter t squared. Okay. The really great thing now is we've taken this matrix, which has four degrees of freedom. And now we only have to worry about this t and d which is just two degrees of freedom. And in particular, when we have two variables, only t and d, we can plot them. When we have four variables, we have no really good way of plotting them and visualizing it. So we can visualize what's going on here with these matrices by just focusing on t and d. So let's do that in the next slide. Okay. We are going to have t be on the horizontal axis. So this will be the t-axis. And then the vertical axis, excuse me, will be d. And as I said, the important curve here is the parabola t squared over 4.
equals d. Okay, now above this parabola, we have that d is larger than t squared over 4. And when that happens, we get complex eigenvalues. And recall that alpha is going to be t over 2. So in this region above the parabola, this is where we have complex eigenvalues. Now, when t is exactly equal to 0, there will be no real part to the eigenvalue. So a face portrait of a solution where t is equal to 0 would look like that. It's going to be a periodic solution. Automatically, we're going to have a periodic solution when the trace is equal to 0. Now, when d is larger than t squared over 4 and the trace is positive, now we still have complex eigenvalues, but here the real part of the complex eigenvalue will be positive, and so the phase portraits of solutions will have will look like a spiral source. When t is negative, the phase portrait of solutions will look like a spiral sink. Okay. So what these pictures are, these aren't these pictures aren't pictures of d and t, these little squiggles I've made. They're pictures of the phase portraits of the solutions. When t falls in this left portion above the parabola, the solutions will be spiral sinks. When t falls in this right half of the parabola, but, but, but when t and d fall in this right half above the parabola, we will have spiral sources. And when t is equal to zero and d is positive, we'll have exactly centers. Now, let's think about when d is negative. When d is negative, right, the important thing in the quadratic formula, right, is this t squared minus 4d. Right? And we have t plus or minus the square root of t squared minus 4d, and then all over 2. So when d is negative, it's going to add things to this t squared, and we're going to add something to t squared and then take its root, so it's going to be something that's larger than t. So in particular, when we take the plus root, we'll have a positive number. When we take the minus root, t minus this quantity, it'll be negative because this quantity is going to be larger than t. So we're going to get one positive and one negative eigenvalue. So all underneath, when d is negative, right, in this entire region, we are going to have saddles because one eigenvalue is going to be positive and the other eigenvalue is going to be negative. So we're going to have saddles when d is negative. Let's think about over here in this portion. Over here, we are going to have d be positive, but not big enough to give us complex eigenvalues. And, but it's going to be positive, so the thing in this square root is going to be, after we take the square root, is going to be smaller than t. So t is positive, and both eigenvalues in this region above the t-axis, but below the, the uh, parabola here, are going to have both eigenvalues positive. So here we're going to have sources. Right? Both positive eigenvalues will have a source here. On the other hand, on this side, the exact opposite occurs. We'll have both eigenvalues be negative and we'll have a sink here. Okay. Now, on this line, we will have t squared equal to 4d. And when that happens, we will only have one eigenvalue. So on this line, we'll only have one eigenvalue. So these are the situations from the previous section. We have one eigenvalue. Here the eigenvalue is going to be positive. So here solutions will look like this. Okay, positive single eigenvalue. Over here, the eigenvalue is going to be negative in a single value. 
So the face portrait will look like this. Okay. okay. So what's the point of the trace determinant plane? It's not a huge deal, but it allows you, if you can look at the trace and look at the determinant, once you compute those, you can immediately know what kind of solution you're going to get based on where it falls in this picture, depending on D and T. Uh, and it's very useful then when you're studying a specific situation, you want to be very careful to stay away from places where the behavior changes. Right, we've talked about bifurcations before. And here you want to be careful if you're modeling a situation and you're close to one of these yellow lines. Any of these yellow lines are where a change occurs in the behavior of the solutions. If you, if you calculate your parameters and your D and T are somewhere over here, you're pretty safe. Okay. If your D and T are slightly off, if your A, B, C, and D in the matrix are slightly off, you're not going to have too many different behaviors. But if your D and T are very close to one of these lines, like say here, then you want to be super careful about your parameters because you don't know, depending on your error in your parameters for A, B, C, and D in figuring out this equation, you don't know whether you're going to have one eigenvalue, two real eigenvalues, and a sink, or one comp two complex eigenvalues, and a spiral sink. You're not, you're not going to know unless you are very, very careful with your parameters. Okay, that's the trace determinant plane.